Greenland stars Gerard Butler and is yet again another attempt for him at a disaster film. His last one, Geostorm, was bad. This comes from the director of Angel Has Fallen as well as Shot Caller. A comet is hurtling toward Earth, and originally scientists believe that it's just kind of going to pass by. Some fragments might burn up in the atmosphere, but eventually those fragments chip away and endanger the lives of almost everyone on the planet. So Gerard Butler and his family are trying to flee to safety. When I sat down to watch this movie, I didn't really think I was going to be in for any type of high art. I just wanted to watch a fun, disposable disaster film. I was thinking about movies like Armageddon or The Day After Tomorrow. And surprisingly, the film is more serious than I expected it to be, and not really in a hammy way. A lot of it is because the film is actually mid-budget range, and you don't get that that much at all anymore. In fact, that's very rare. I immediately like that about the film. You don't get a lot of mid-budget range movies anymore. Everything's either a $5 million horror film or a fucking Marvel movie. The fact that this movie was made for, I don't know, what, 30 40 million dollars, whatever it is. It allowed them to do more things with character while also having a lot of CGI spectacle. But the film chooses not to focus that much on it. And I don't think it's just because of budget reasons. They focus heavily on character in Greenland. And, and for that reason, the movie is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I still have a lot of issues with the film and most of them are towards the last half. The setup for the film is really where the strengths lie. I liked that Instead of seeing the first impact in some grand wide shot where you're actually placed at the city, like the cameras in the city where the first impact happens, you see it from the perspective of a family that's actually watching it on the news. And because of that, you feel the reaction in the room. You stay with this family for the whole movie. And so you don't really go away to a military room where a bunch of people are pressing buttons and things you don't understand and waving forms around and walking down hallways really fast. You stay with the family the whole time. You don't go to other countries where random people you don't know are running away from explosions or tidal waves. You stay with the family. And so you always get their perspective. And for that reason, it puts it above other disaster movies for me. The first half of the film was surprisingly effective. It's mostly handheld, and so it does feel pretty intense. There's actually a lot of tension. Towards the last half, though, things get a bit repetitive. There's only so many ways that the family can be separated and have to find each other again. There's only so many times somebody can hitchhike and try to get a ride someplace. That starts to get old pretty fast. And once we get to the inevitable conclusion, which, don't worry, won't get into, Eh, I don't know. It all just feels sort of like, yeah, that was going to happen, and I, that's that's how it happened, so it happened. You know, it doesn't really feel like there's any surprises. It's just a very serviceable movie that has a surprisingly effective setup. The one thing that I will say going into the film, I had no idea what it's about. I thought it was going to be absurd. I thought it was going to be like day after tomorrow times 10, so I thought it was actually about an asteroid the size of Greenland. <laughs> hurtling towards Earth, which I, I kind of wish that's what it was. Still though, after this crazy year we've had, there were a few scenes that hit differently than they would have. There's a, a scene with a first responder, um, like a, a doctor or, or a nurse, they don't really clarify, who provides the characters with some very important medicine for their son. And I remember just thinking, damn, like that just that hits differently this year because We've seen so many healthcare professionals risking their lives and doing crazy awesome things and dealing with a lot of persecution this year. And I don't know, that scene was just really heartwarming and it probably never would have been if it hadn't have been for, for this crazy fucking year. Also, I have to say the kid in the movie is smart. He doesn't do stupid shit. And when he's in peril, you believe it. It doesn't feel set up, it doesn't feel like he's just like being a kid actor, you know? He's, he's really good in the film, but he makes choices where you're like, good job, kid. Like, you did a good fucking thing, you know? A lot of times in movies, the writer uses the kid to make things happen because the kid is inexperienced or the kid is stupid, and they think, well, the kid will do this dumb choice, and that will lead to some tension. Not here. The, the writing for the kid is actually really smart. Overall, this movie surprised me. Is it great? No. It's got a lot of structural issues for the last half, and it gets very repetitive, and there's basically no surprises. But I like that the movie did not rely on CGI, and it actually focuses on the family for the most part, which heightened the tension for me. I'm gonna give Greenland a B minus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.